y'all, it's Laura, and I am back with Scrap Timber for day two, and today's prompt is single photo. So I have this really powerful picture of my mom. You may not understand why it's powerful yet, but you will. And I wanted to scrap it on its own. Have a bit of a story to go with it for this layout, and I intend to actually not put this one in an album. I fully intend to put this one up on my wall. And I'm really excited to have this as one of my framed layouts. I have bought several 12 by 12 white shadow box frames, and I'm gonna put some of my favorite layouts up on the wall to inspire me while I'm creating, as well as to create some decor. Because let's face it, my craft room, <laughs> I've moved into my craft room. I've even organized my craft room, but right now it's a little lackluster because there's nothing on the walls and I don't want to do a tour until I really get it decorated and looking really cute. And so you will see that soon, I promise, but I need to get some layouts in it so that they are inspiration to me while I'm scrapping. So for this particular photo, I had lots of bits and pieces left from my August and September kit. And this was one of the layouts that I was playing around with some scrap papers and I just happened to kind of get them in an order that I really liked. And then I went and found a photo that I thought would work with them. And I think because these are so dramatic and kind of dark, then I really wanted a photo that was kind of stands out against that dramatic darkness. And also, just kind of uh, stands on its own. It has its own vocal point, but it wouldn't get lost in this dark, dramatic <laughs> design work back here. I love the florals on this page. I thought this little vine here would be fabulous to really add a bit of texture to it, a little bit of layering to it. I have uh, put a piece of eighth inch, I believe it is, tape down and then some glue to keep that vine in place while the glue dries. And that usually works pretty well for me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring out some of my embellishments. I didn't really know what area I was gonna embellish yet. I'm just like, we'll just give it a go, right? We're just gonna give it a try. And then I pulled out this giant bag of wood veneer that I'm trying to use up in this kit. And I'm going to add a title and a couple of wood veneer hearts just for decoration. And that kind of helped me figure out where I wanted those embellishment clusters to go. And I don't even end up using the wood veneer title, but it was a placeholder. It, it helped me in my mind to say, visually, okay, this is where the title is going to go, so I know to leave space for it. And so I decided, you know what, let's bring in some florals. I've got florals up on this left-hand side. Let's just go for it. Let's do a giant floral swag. Let's just really dig deep into our floral ephemera, which is mostly made up of fussy cut florals from the pattern papers and uh, just see what I can do, to see what I can do. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of the gold acetate as well as these fussy cut florals together and just create kind of a diagonal design here from the left side of the photo to the bottom right. And then I'll have another cluster at the bottom left, which is that triang triangular design of clusters that is often called the rule of three. And it's just that using odd numbers is very, very interesting to the eye. Our brain likes to find the center of things. And if you have odd numbers, there's always a center. And that's very, very interesting to our brain. So using the rule of three on this one, I don't always use it. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I do two clusters, sometimes I do four. I like to break rules, it's just how it is. So I'm gonna have the two big ones though by the photo. So most of the embellishing is close to the photo to keep it the focal point. Make sure that is what's getting the most attention. I also watched an interesting video by Shamel Lane for scrapbook.com's YouTube channel, and she was talking about how quite often with her layouts, she thinks about a layout as a newspaper, okay? Where do the most important things in the newspaper go? Well, either you have a headline, i.e. a title, and or a photo right up top. You don't normally have a big long-winded story before the title, 
before the <laughs> before the photo, before the little decorative bits, if you will. So she said she often tries to put either her title or her photo in that prominent top left corner or at least the top left corner of the design. Like the design itself, the focal point could be in the center, but then the majority of your design work would be underneath, if that makes sense. And I thought that was an interesting idea. I don't always do that. I quite often do not do that. And so I thought, let's give that a go. Let's give that a try and see how that looks. And I actually really like this layout a lot. So I think Chamel may be on to something there, and uh, that might be something that I have to try some more of. Now, I'm a bit scattered with design. I do like to experiment and try all different kinds of designs. So this should surprise absolutely no one that I don't stick to one. <laughs> but I did really enjoy this design. It was a lot of fun to play with, and I was just thinking about that video when I was designing it. Now, for Scrap Timber, which is our video a day marathon that we are having this month in September, we have guests every single day. And today's guest is Gwen Ruck, whose channel I believe is called Created by Gwen. And I will be sure to link her below for you, as well as the Scrappy Sisters who are collaborating with me this month for Scrap Timber. Now, they generally call their Scrap September, but we're kind of combining forces this year and we're both doing our video day marathons, Scrap Timber. And I think that's what they're calling it. They may be calling it Scrap September because that's their thing. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're calling it Scrap Timber. Either way, be sure to check out Gwen and the Scrappy Sisters to see what they have got up for today's single photo challenge. Now, I know a lot of you don't do single photos, so bear with me through this one. Remember, this one's going up on the wall, and it's going to have some very personal journaling in it about my mother and what she's doing in this photo, which may be a little hard to see, but she's actually standing at the pulpit in our church and uh, she's preaching. She is a high priest in our church, which is a very important position. And it's someone, something that I've always admired about my mom, that she's not afraid to work hard and work hard for something that's important to her. She's always been very motivated and I've always been so impressed with her ability to get up and stand up in front of people and speak. And her sermons are always extremely thoughtful. They're always well-researched and they always provoke the way you think about a certain thing, regardless if it's in the Bible, if it's in your life, if it's in another area of the world. She has a brilliant way of making you think really hard, question the way you think, and then go do your own research to find an opinion. And I think that's really brilliant. I think that's a great critical thinking exercise that we should do more of in and out of church. Do you know what I'm saying? I just really love the way that she pushes you as a listener to follow her down a path and then go off on your own journey. And I love that, I love that. It's such a wonderful experience to hear her speak. And even outside of church, she has a very, very important way of focusing in on the important details in a situation and staying focused on those things. Whereas I myself am all over the place, <laughs> jump from thing to thing, and can never pay attention to one thing very long. I greatly admire that skill. I really do. And so I can even more so appreciate that she can get up there and take the time to research and provide a really incredible sermon so that you feel like you've walked away from that service having learned something, having learned something, having taken in new information that will help you grow, if only mentally. And I appreciate that a lot. Uh, obviously, this is a big part of her life and a big part of my family's life and has been really hard not to be able to go to see family and church and all of that stuff. But you know what? I also think that this has helped me grow 
in, in my own mind as how I approach church. So that's been really interesting. That's it for this one, guys. Sorry to get a bit preachy with you. I didn't intend to. <laughs> but as the layout says, preach, sister. <laughs> that's it for this one, guys. Until next time. Bye.